It's time for Living with Victory, a program of hope and encouragement brought to you by friends of compassion and listeners like you. Now, here are your hosts, Tony and Lorraine Giorgio, with today's message of perseverance. Jesus is with me when the storm clouds gather, when the winds of this world are below and strong. Welcome to Living with Victory, proving life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain, giving you peace, power, and joy through perseverance and faith, above all, in Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Tony Giorgio. Hey, quickly, tune in, if you want, to our live stream at WPTLradio.net. And you can tell your friends, too, if uh, they have a computer, want to listen on the computer. We stream live every single week. So, again, WPTLradio.net. Laureen and I would like to send our listeners out there a gift. And we have this little Bible. It's a pocket version, New King James Version of the New Testament. And it's really a neat little Bible you can carry with you, put it in your car, Give it to your friends, family, and maybe maybe a brand new Christian who needs one to carry with them or someone who is looking for a new life in Jesus Christ. Give them the Bible. And it has a reference section up front, which is really great. Where to find help? And it has the page numbers. It, it has all the verses and the topics. And we are offering this for you two per listener. We, we're more than happy to give away two. You want to keep one? Give one away. All you have to do is call 828-926-4600 and leave a message. If we're not around, we'll get back to you. Or you can go to our website at livingwithvictory.org and just click on the contact button and give us a message uh, that you wanted. And also, we have a very limited amount in Spanish If you have your Spanish friends, if they would like a Bible written in the Spanish language, we've got them. We can send them. Just specify it. Okay, again, it's 828-926-4600 or livingwithvictory.org. Hit the contact button and type us a message. We'll get it, and we will get back to you. And now, without further delay, I want to introduce my co-host, my soulmate for 46 some odd years. She deserves the, the Purple Heart. My lovely wife, Laureen, with the topic of the day and the verse for the day. Hey, Laureen. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad to be here today speaking to you about our Lord. Trust and obey is the topic for today. Acts 10, 38, and this is from the Amplified Bible. How God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. How he went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. From this scripture, we see that God consecrated Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. He used that spirit to go about doing good and helping those who were oppressed by Satan. Why? Because God was with him. In Judges 6, 11 through 14, we see that Gideon is hiding from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord in verse 12 appears to him and says to him, the Lord is with you you mighty man of fearless courage. God considered him a mighty man of fearless courage, even though he was hiding. And Gideon said to him, O sir, if the Lord is with us, why is all this befallen us? And where are all his wondrous works of which our fathers told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go, In this your might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midian, for have I not sent you? Like Gideon, we ask the Lord, why has God forsaken me? Actually, the first thing we should do is ask, have I neglected and disobeyed God, as Gideon should have? It is very easy to overlook our accountability to God and to blame him or others for our situations. 
When we find ourselves in this position, we should get on our knees and repent, get closer to God rather than blame him. And as I said in 14, the Lord turned to him and said, Go, in this your might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midian. Have I not sent you? God is always with us, but his Holy Spirit is very subtle. And that's why we must fellowship with him constantly and be with him so that we understand and know what it is that he is wanting from us. When God is with us, we should trust, obey, and go. As he said to Gideon, I have to repeat that, have I not sent you? If he is sending us, we should not fear. There are times we must be active and do what he tells us to do, but we cannot hear him if we are not paying attention to him. The same was true for Moses when he and the Israelites were between the Red Sea and the Egyptians. Moses had a positive attitude and encouraged the Israelites to watch the wonderful way God would rescue them. They looked like they were trapped, as we sometimes feel in our tribulations. Which way do we go? Do we take the left? Do we take the right? What is it that you want us to do, Lord? But he knew the God that he served and trusted that he would make a way even though it looked impossible. He called on God to intervene, as we should. Then stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, as Moses said to the Israelites. And I found this very interesting because when he called on the Lord and asked him what to do, then the Lord said, why are you coming to me? I have given you what you need. God always gives us what we need. Gideon here is going into battle against multitudes. He's only had 300 men left in his army to go. And now, of course, he's getting a little, you know. But if God is telling you it's okay, go do. Don't worry about it. Don't look at your humanity. You're, the Almighty Christ is there with you, the Holy Spirit. You got it made. You got all the tools. I think what happens is we say we believe in God, but do we believe him? Do we believe his word that he is with us, that he will protect us? that we are mighty men because his Holy Spirit is in us. We don't always feel that strength. God isn't saying go when you feel strong. He is saying go because I'm with you <laughs> and That's I've given right. you the power. That's right, even though you have 300 men against 10,000, don't <laughs> exactly. worry about it, you know. <laughs> God's graciousness to Moses, he said to him, hold your rod out over the sea and of course, he opened it up and they were able to go through safely. But he did say to him, why are you coming to me? I have already given you what you need. Now, prayer must have a vital place in our lives, but there is a time for action. There are times that we just stand still and postpone doing what we are supposed to do. But when he says to go, it is dangerous when we don't go. There is a window of opportunity that he gives us, and we may miss that window. God will do his part, but we must do ours. God never wants to hold back blessings from us. Amen. Our inactivity stops him from sending them down to us. Disobedience and not trusting him also stops the blessings. I know obey is a word that we don't use very often today because we all feel we want to do it our way. We know better. But when it comes to serving God, it has to be his will, his way, and in his timing. That's right. I remember two years ago when we started doing the program, we joined the National Religious Broadcast and we were going to go down to the seminar in Orlando. I know I had told you we had gone to the Cove and there was this big tall man that I had met and felt a connection to. I didn't even know his name at the time. Lo and behold, when we were down there, he came in and he happened to run the meeting and sat right next to me. And of course, that was Jim Kirkland. And we thought, well, you know, before we went, we didn't have the money to go. But yet I was reading about Abraham when God told Abraham to go and get away from his family and gave him the promises to make him the father of a mighty nation. When I saw the word go, I said, I know he's telling me to go for a reason. 
but I thought after the, the seminar that maybe I misread him. But you know what? Two years later, I got cancer, and guess who got me my doctor? The big pussy <laughs> Jim cat. Jim Perkins. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I have to say that God knows best. He knows why you're where you are. He knows who you have to meet. He knows everything about you. All I could say is if you know the one who's holding your right hand and says, fear not, you don't have to worry about it. And you know, here's the point, the, the, the teddy bear we refused there four years ago was the director of radio for Billy Graham <laughs> exactly. Evangelistic Association, exactly. God bless him. And who knew that he knew, the doctor, that she's, she was going to need later on to help her and is a Christian doctor who prayed with her before the surgery. This all came about by God putting this man in place. The word says that he does order our steps, and he looks at us as being fearless. He looks at us as being strong and able to do anything that he asks us to do because he knows that if we go with him, we cannot lose. And you've got a formula for that, don't you? Simple formula. A simple formula. Pray, trust, and obey, and, and then go. go. Exactly. That old hymn, trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. His way is always the best way. We just have to keep our paws out of it. <laughs> exactly. Here's, a, here's another, another little quickie. You know, when we, we, we got into that big debacle with the restaurant, we lost the restaurant, lost the house. I had never been... To school, I quit school, the whole bit. And now I don't have anything else but my cooking skills. So I decided to go back to school. I'm going to go to college. We don't have the money because we lost everything. We went bankrupt. And we apply it to college. All right. We prayed about it. We're, we're yes. applying. We're there online and all. And they said, well, that'll be $50 registration fee. We don't have $50. And they're saying, well, there's nothing I can do. Well, standing there looking at each other like, oh, gee, what are we going to do now? We prayed about it. A man comes out of the office, okay, and he says, I overheard the conversation. He said, here, you pay me back when you've got it. And he gave me $50 to register. I don't know from Adam. Do you understand this wasn't our doing this was the Spirit of God that produced this. When he says, go, you go. I had a register for school. He wanted me to do that and graduate. But I, I got stopped. The devil said, oh, no, you're not now. Normally, what would you do? You'd walk away, wouldn't you? But here, the dean of students hands me $50 to register. So remember that. Trust and obey, and you got it made. God is so good to us. He gives us so much. We should want to reciprocate and just obey him and do it his way and just trust him because that pleases him. God is saying, this is, now fill in your name. For example, this is Laureen. Okay, now you fill in your name. I know I can trust Laureen. You fill in your name. And I am pleased. Amen. I want to please my God because I know he does everything to take care of me. And he's pleased with you. So remember that our ministry is up to you and your giving. And this is how we continue. So this is Tony. And Laureen. Saying you keep dancing in the rain. And join us again next week. Hey, you know, tell your friends. You've been listening to Living with Victory with your hosts, Tony and Lorraine Giorgio, who for 30 years have advocated for seriously ill children through Compassion Children's Foundation. Many families that have children that receive daily treatments for their illnesses are extremely challenged to even begin to get their kids the life-saving treatments they need due to current gas prices. Compassion Children's Foundation is there to lend a hand. That is our mission, and you can become a partner. Support for this radio ministry comes from friends of Compassion and listeners like you. Your tax-deductible donations can be sent to Compassion Children's Foundation, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. You can also donate through your PayPal account by logging on to livingwithvictory.org. Tony is available to speak to your group or church members. You can call him at 828-926-4600. 
Podcasts of this and other Living with Victory programs are available at livingwithvictory.org. Thanks for listening.